Everyone is familiar with goal setting, and yet not everyone successfully and frequently meets their goals. Why? There are seven common mistakes that we make around goal setting, and today I'm gonna to address all of those pitfalls. So this is the seven top pitfalls that people encounter when setting goals and tips on how to avoid them. Pitfall number one, the goal is too big. If a goal is really big, it becomes intimidating, scary, easy to put off. These are the types of goals that become the things that you've been trying to do for years. So in Cammie's case, her goal that was huge, big, and scary was to have a minimalist household. What does that even mean? It's so big, it's an entire house, and she has three teenagers and a husband who likes to shop. So the way you can get around this is to set baby goals. Most really big, scary goals can be broken down into three to five baby goals. And then you pick one baby goal to work on and that becomes attainable. That becomes something you can get your head around. So you can still talk about how you're going to have a minimalist household. And right now you're working on, in Cammie's case, it was clean out the garage. That was the baby goal she chose to work with. Pitfall number two, the goal is not clear. It's too vague. How can you get into action and make something a reality if you're not even sure what you're talking about? In Cammie's case, clean out the garage. Does that mean get everything out of the garage and have it be empty? Does that mean that everything in there is organized, right? So the way you get around this pitfall is to make sure that your goal is measurable, results-driven, and has a due date. So an effective goal that is likely to be met describes a result you want to produce that is measurable with a due date. So for Cami, clean out the garage turned into clean out the garage so there is room to park an SUV and we can find what we need in less than five minutes all by the end of March. Pitfall number three, you don't make a plan. So you define this amazing goal that has you so jazzed, but you have no idea what you're gonna do to make it happen, to make it become a reality. All a plan is, is defining the actions you need to take in order for the, that goal to become real. A lot of people way overcomplicate this. Grab a sheet of paper and a pen and just do a brain dump. Make a list of every action you can think of that you need to do in order for that goal to become real. Just do a brain dump. You don't have to organize it, you don't have to prioritize it, just get all of those actions down on a piece of paper. So in Cammie's case, her first pass at making a plan involved schedule time to clean, get the boxes, order a dumpster, and have a garage sale. Pitfall number four, you don't include anything in your plan that's gonna help you measure your success. So remember, I said an effective goal that's likely to be met has measurements to it, it's a measurable goal. Well, if you don't include any actions in your plan that will enable you to measure it, how are you gonna know if the goal is a success? And part of the reason this is important is because you get the satisfaction of crossing it off your list, which we all love, but it's also important because at the end of all of this work, if you complete your goal and then you look around and realize this isn't what I meant to do, a lot of times it's because it wasn't measurable or because you didn't take actions to make sure you could measure your success. So in Cammie's case, she added two items to her action list. She added find a system to organize so she could find something in less than five minutes and measure her car so that she could fit the SUV into the garage. Pitfall number five, you don't break your plan down enough. You want this puppy to be bite-sized. So if any action on your list feels overwhelming, if there's any action on your list that you would not be comfortable going and doing right now if you had the time, then you need to break it down into more baby steps. Depending on the size of your goal, some of your actions may even be baby goals that need to have their own planning done around them. So in Cammie's case, she had a lot of baby steps that she needed to add. Here's her list. Notice how have a garage sale went from being one action to identifying five baby steps that she could take. Even measure the car, which seems super simple, she was able to identify three baby steps that she could take so that measuring the car didn't feel overwhelming. We talked through it and we made sure we got it down to the babiest step possible. Pitfall number six, you're gonna laugh at this one, you don't actually do anything. A lot of times it is so common for somebody to sit down, make a goal, make a plan, and then they're exhausted and they're out of time and they stick it in their desk and it never sees the light of day again. There are some really simple strategies you can use to avoid this pitfall. The number one thing is go ahead right now and pick the easiest thing on your list and do it. 
I promise it will give you motivation and momentum to keep doing other things on the list. When you're done with the easiest thing, pick the next easiest thing and the next easiest thing. If, as you're going through this process of picking the next easiest thing, you bump up against the fact that nothing left on the list feels easy, it's because you need to break those puppies down into more bite-sized baby steps. So if you get stuck, it's because you didn't break it down enough. So just pause and revisit that exercise of breaking it down into even more bite-sized baby steps. So Cammie experienced that feeling stuck on getting into action with having a garage sale. Remember, she broke it down into five baby steps, but those were all still feeling really large for her. So like advertising a garage sale, she was like, I don't even know where to start. So we broke it down. So prepping for the day of the garage sale, we broke that down. The final pitfall, pitfall number seven, is not having enough information to set an effective goal. This is incredibly common and it ties right back into pitfall number one. So I had a client, Jenny, her goal was to eliminate debt, to get debt free. And I immediately went into, all right, let's make it measurable, give it a due date. So how much debt do you have? Let's measure it by that. She's like, I don't know. Okay, you said you own a house. How much do you own the house? I, I don't know. How far behind are you in your car payment? I, I don't know that either. And it made sense because it was really vulnerable for her to even talk about this. It was so scary for her. And the more she kept it vague, the easier it was for her to mentally avoid. And she was really scared that all of that information was gonna add up to a number that was just so big that it felt unobtainable, which is pitfall number one, right? Having a goal that's too big. So the way that Jenny and I handled that is we made gathering the information her goal. So her measurable goal was to gather all of her debt information so that she could make a plan to get debt free by the end of the week. So things that went on her, her action list for this goal were things like open all of her mail, make a spreadsheet of all of her debt, find out how much she owed on her house, contact a realtor to find out how much her house was worth. And she made a list of the things that she needed to do and over the course of the week, she knocked that stuff out, baby. And by the end of the week, we had another call and she had everything needed for us to start making some measurable goals around how she was going to get debt free. But even then, at the end of that, her goal wasn't get debt free. Her goal became eliminate debt by 20% by the end of the quarter, right? So the last pitfall is not having all of the information needed. And the best way I can suggest that you handle that is to turn gathering that information into a goal. And know that the more you break stuff down into bite-sized chunks, the more likely it is to get done. So those are the seven common pitfalls that I see people experience when they're attempting to set an effective goal. If you follow my tips on how to avoid all seven, you will be well on your way to setting effective goals, having them met, which is the perfect, perfect setup for being able to live an intentional life in anti-survival mode. Guiding people through how to live strategically and get into anti-survival mode is one of the things I am most passionate about. I work with people on this concept one-on-one, -on -one, and if you're interested in learning more, I would love to have a conversation with you. There's a link below to schedule time with me.